This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, Carm Capriato, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Welcome to the 635th episode of Remarkable Results Radio. In this episode, multi-shop owner Seth Thorson from Eurotech Auto Repair explains two important envelopes that he has in his office. One is yellow and one is red, and they contain key information if he unexpectedly was away from his business. Now, as shop owners, you are constantly working on your business, but did you ever think about what would happen to it if you weren't around? Where would someone find important passwords or contact information for sustaining your business? No one plans for accidents to happen, but it's important to prepare for the unexpected for your business's survival and for your family and employees. Hey, thanks to our great sponsor, Napa, for making this episode possible. The Napa Auto Care Gold Certification offers a premier tier for members to provide consumers with a consistent experience anywhere in the country. Gold Certified members earn benefits like preferred referrals, $1,500 in marketing funds, tracks free. Hey, to learn about Gold Certification, speak to your NAPA representative. Hey, the key talking points for this very important episode reside at remarkableresults.biz forward slash E635. Hey, don't forget, follow me on social media. I can be found on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and even Twitter. And I'd appreciate a like, follow, subscribe, or share. Hey, warm well, welcome to Seth Thorson, Eurotech Auto Repair, New Brighton, Minnesota. Hello, Seth. Hey, Carm. How are you? Hey, good, bud. Uh, two locations, but on the cusp of the third in uh, in Woodbury. Yep, third location. Uh, second location is Woodbury. Third location will be Medina. Oh, the oh the oh the third is Medina. I, I got that wrong. Cool. All right. Excited for you. You built that uh, ground up, didn't you? Ground up, yep. It's part of a Medina Motorplex, which is a place where people house their cars and feel their passion. And so we're putting a retail auto repair on the outside of people's storage garages. How cool is that? Uh, Excited. Uh, In one day, you're going to give us a virtual tour of that place. We will. Can't wait. Hey, we were on together on a great call one evening. You mentioned something about, well, yeah, I got yellow and red envelopes. And I think there were many who were on that uh, Zoom call that would said, oh, what the hell is that? And of course, I think you opened up a lot of eyes. So I said, hey, why don't we come on and, and talk about what happens when? And basically, you said, hey, the yellow is if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm down and out for a little bit. And the red one is I'm no longer on Earth. And I, I think it's so interesting to have that kind of preparation, to have leaderships in making sure there's some continuity. And I got a million questions. So let's kind of start again, everything that's private and personal, please, let's not bring it up, but let's bring up the concept of why people need to leave plans behind if something happens. So let's talk about yellow. Uh, Yellow says that uh, maybe I'm in the hospital for a week or something happened. I maybe was in an accident. Uh, I'm unconscious. How does the business sustain? And the biggest question that I have the biggest one is, does your significant other have an idea of what's in the envelopes? No, my, my wife is not actually involved in the business at all. So this is more for staff and everybody else. She would certainly try to step in and do what she could, but I think she'd be more concerned with, with my children and taking care of me than, than really what the business would do, rightfully so, right? So, you know, when I look at what those things are, they're there to plan and, and make sure the business stays alive, which is what feeds their family and what feeds my employees' families and and everything that goes along with that. I think if you start building that out, I mean, mine has been built for a while, but man, that thing evolves all the time. Like I got to constantly go back and look at it and go, well, I'm not doing that task anymore. That really doesn't need to be in there. And I think if you're a day-to-day operations guy where you're in your store and running your store, that binder might be a little bit bigger than mine. Got it. And it's a fluid, always constantly moving. So you can't really set it and forget it. You can't just build this envelope, uh, the yellow or the red, and never look at it again. I don't believe so. No. I mean, I, I try. I mean, some of the stuff can be, but some of the stuff does need that be updated periodically. It's really a log of what I do every day and, and what would need to be done to keep the company, obviously, afloat during short term and long term type events. 
This has nothing to do with the pandemic, nothing to do with severe weather. It it has to do with the fact that the role you play in the current company cannot be performed. So here is what you need to know in order to keep us at 100%. Yeah, here's what you need to do for the first week, the second week, the third week, the fourth week. You know, it's generally laid out like that in my yellow folder. The red folder has a lot more in it but the yellow folder would just be day to day at the current point of my business. Since I have a, a COO district manager, Daniel, who's been on the show before, I don't have as much in that yellow folder right now because he's even been handed off payroll and some other things to do that. I don't really have a lot in that yellow folder. There's some marketing contacts. There's some things that need to be checked off. But I mean, I go on vacation for a month, right? And don't come into the shop. So in that short term folder now, there's more three to five month stuff. Like I'm in a coma for three to five months. We don't know what's going to happen. Some of those things. But for me in my current yellow folder, there's not as much as there used to be. Okay. So he's a chief integrator for you, which is really cool because you have less to do with the day to day ops. And, And I like it. Yellow equals short term. Are you defining roles that, again, if if he takes over your particular position, do you basically say, well, then uh, John and Joe need to step up and and here's a new role for you while uh, Seth is not here? In my current situation, Daniel would be able to assign those roles based on his team. In years past, before I had Daniel, when we had something like this, no, I would assign roles. Even in my yellow folder at that point might be some of my consultants. I've used Cecil and I've used Greg Bunch. There may be even a, you know, call them, find the short-term help. And some of that's evolved. But if you're building this out and you're, maybe you're involved in your day-to-day, maybe you're half service writer, maybe you are the manager, maybe you're running your day-to-day stuff. I would certainly encourage you to, if you don't have somebody that can step into all those roles, make sure in that folder, there's people you can call because you know, those guys care about me. They care about all their clients, right? So if something happened and one of my people called them, they would probably find somebody to be able to come out and help. That's such a great point. I love that point. I think we need to just, uh, you know, concentrate on the fact that you have a consultant, a coach, um, whatever, whatever you want to term that individual who has supported you and helped you. Uh, For example, you have a coach. I mean, some people go through coaches in two or three years, and then they kind of take a break, and then they bring on somebody new. What if you were not in a current coaching relationship? Would you still put the person that you worked with last in it because they know you best? I probably would, or you know, maybe I'm in a 20 group, and I have some really close contacts. I got some other industry friends. You know what I mean? I, you know, some really close industry friends. If I put one of them down, um, cause maybe they hadn't heard of it or if they all of a sudden know that there's a crisis, you know, they may send somebody out. I mean, some of my current industry friends probably would send a manager out or, and I'd do the same for them, right? If I have a extra body and something really happens and I could send somebody out, um, we do. I run a consultant tech support group, right? One of my good shops, Paul Doc Prenza, great dude, got a shop in uh, Mississippi, Oxford. He went down with COVID issues for a while and he's a small shop. And I sent Justin out, who's my tech support guy and mechanic, as well as another friend of mine went out there and they kept the shop running for two or three weeks with the help of his other staff. And we were able to keep his shop moving and going. So when he came back, it wasn't a disaster, right? These, these are things that, you know, you do to help friends out. And I think people will do. Although there was no formal plan, it was just we heard through the grapevine and how can we do, what can we help? A formal plan makes it easier to execute. I I love what you just said. Uh, By the way, LMV Bavarian, a luxury motor vehicle, Bavarian, BMW tech support company. And uh, of course, Justin Morgan, who you just mentioned, has been on the show before. Great guy. Would the people that are in your yellow short-term envelope is saying, listen, I I may lean on you. Do you tell them or do you just figure that if they get the call, they're going to know what to do? Some of them know. You know, like my accountant is very aware of what I have on there. My financial advisor is very aware he's on there. My attorney's aware he's on there should something come up. You know, some paperwork's in there if it's a much more short term and we need a, a power of attorney form is in there should that need to arise if somebody needs to sign checks or make a checking account um, or add a signer to the bank. Um, my banker is in there. You know, just things that give power to people to be able to do the things that they would need to do. So there's a great point that I think you're bringing up. 
you would go to the bank or go to the attorney, go to the, say, the insurance people and say, listen, I'm, I'm building this short term, something happens to me thing. Uh, what do you think from your perspective should be in there? And I want to let you know that your name is going to be in there too. advise me. Yes. Good. good smart move. Yeah. Cause every state's going to be different. Every, you know, my bank is a small bank and they have a board, a committee and they have the old school board meetings. So they want more than some other banks may want to be able to assign certain powers over. But then there's checks and balances that are established where my accountant still has to, you know, check off because I don't want something to happen. Somebody take the papers, you know, maybe try to misuse things. And this way there is some checks and balances built into what we laid out. Got it. Uh, Let's talk about a communication plan in either the short, I mean, I imagine the long-term plan, the red envelope has to have a much stronger communication plan, but who gets notified by whom, timelines, is any of that in the yellow envelope? The yellow envelope is not as in-depth because that's more, you know, that's under six months where, you know, usually it steps you into it. Like during the first three months, there's no need to go to the bank to have checks signed because most of the checks in my business already cut and assigned. You're probably paying electronically anyway. So short of anything past 90 days that there's not as much to do on a banking. Should it go past 90 days, it starts to say, okay, now use this form, this form, and this form, get the power to do this. These are the bills that are not automatically paid. These are the ones that we manually do for whatever reason in our company. And these are the things that need to be stepped into and and handled. Hey, Carm here, and coming up, find out what Seth puts into the red envelope. Hey, it's Carm here to tell you about the best shop management solution for your auto care center, Trax Enterprise. Now, since Napa introduced Trax in 1989, it's been the industry's leading shop management system out there. Today, Trax Enterprise offers even more of the features auto care center owners want, things like a powerful interactive scheduling calendar, faster and streamlined workflow, multi-shop capabilities, easy pay consumer financing integration, and more. That means you can count on Trax Enterprise to help drive your success today and well into the future. The tabbed interface lets you open and view multiple estimates, ROs, invoices, and purchase orders all at the same time. You can even place windows side by side, over or under, or drag a tab from another application outside Trax to open another window. One auto care center owner said he loves being able to have 10 to 12 work orders open at once. Enterprise also offers a Microsoft Outlook type calendar so you can view daily, weekly, and monthly schedules, drag and drop appointments between days and times, and block time to indicate length of work. Punch out to Mitchell Pro Demand is another huge benefit. It provides embedded labor, part, maintenance, and fluid capacities that can be transferred to estimates and repair orders within Trax. Trax Enterprise also streamlines parts ordering. Just one click and it's done. The mobile capture app sold another auto care owner on Trax Enterprise. He said there's no reason to write VINs by hand anymore. You can decode the VIN from a mobile device and send all the information directly to Trax. There are reporting features too. For example, with just a couple of clicks, you can find out how many repair orders you've written in a month. Talk to your Napa Auto Parts store and find out more about what Trax Enterprise can do for you, plus the hundreds of other great things the auto care program has to offer. So your theory on the yellow short term is six months and under. Generally, yep. What do you recommend? Just get a yellow pad out and start writing and start, you know, just to get this thing started, write out all those scenarios, talk to your advisors, and then start to crystallize it, get, get into the Word doc and, and start typing it out and, and roll it over and, and read it over and edit it over and start. It doesn't have to be a perfect document to start with when you're done because it can evolve. Is that how you would recommend people start? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'd like to think mine's pretty good, but nothing's perfect and somebody may be able to do it better. But I started by just writing down what I do every single day. You know, just log your, I mean, some people log their calorie intakes, right? I just log what I do in a day and then I can put together, okay, what tasks do, does somebody need to perform and what tasks are maybe time wasting or whatever, but what tasks does somebody physically need to perform to make the company survive continue and and you're not there to pull a lever or to to sign something or to make a decision i love it okay red envelope um 
serious, uh, you're not around, the business it needs to continue somehow, but also I see a succession thing. Now, that's actually where the family probably needs to get more involved, right? Family's probably a little more involved in the red envelope. At this current juncture, my kids nor my wife are going to want anything with the business. So, I mean, we did an exercise in Vistage with a red envelope for our families. So I have a red envelope for the business and for the families. My wife knows where the family one is. That has my master password for all my online stuff because I use a, a LastPass program and that has my master password. And she would be able to access every password for everything. You know, that way, anything she needed to get into for our financial accounts, for social medias, for anything she'd want to get into, all the passwords I have in my database are there. And that's a personal one, business one. Then that's the plan of we're going to sell the business. Here's here's some of the categories that might be owner's draws. Here's some things to get the business ready for sale. You know, at that point, the business is, is going to be sold. I, I love what you just said. You know, it kind of, if you will, normalize the profit and loss statement to whoever would be interested. And you're the best one to know what's in there that needs to come out so that an, an individual realizes that, hey, I made a lot of great money, but I really made more. Let me help you understand, you know, like you said, the owner's draw, what it was. It, what it really was, because if you were sitting across the table from someone bought it, buying your business, you have firsthand knowledge of what needs to be taken in or out of the P&L or the expense side. And you you got to write that down. I think that's a great, great point that you've got to get into a whole lot of detail. Yeah, you got to get a lot of detail and you want to make sure that, you know, you built it, right? I mean, even if you're not there, it still was your baby, just like your family and everything else. You want to make sure that you get the maximum value for your family and, and everything else. Um, I have some provisions cut out in there for some key employees that should the sale exceed a certain amount, there's bonuses to be paid out to key employees because it's a shock to everybody. So there'd be some bonuses and some payouts cut out to some key employees as well as family in there. You know, I want to take care of the employees too that may be part of putting this puzzle together. Did you think of that on day one or did that evolve? It's probably in evolution where you just start learning more and you start going, you know, what do I need to do? What needs to be in here? What is my perfect scenario? Like nobody wants to think about death, but we're all human and that's part of our life. And that's something that is inevitable no matter what. Great point. What else would we, starting out brand new, kind of, if you will, never done this before, a virgin at creating these envelopes, what would be in your red envelope that we would be surprised about? I'm not sure what you'd be surprised about. I think you start with your attorney and you start with your accountant and you ask them what the biggest messes to unravel on sudden death was. And you'd be surprised the horror stories they'll tell you about what it is to unravel certain things. And it complicates things. And if you're no longer in the business and you weren't doing the things you needed and you didn't have a thorough plan, your business can be worth nothing. And then you leave nothing for, for the people you care about. How smart. I, I love to listen to attorneys. I, I've enjoyed it in the past. I've been to seminars and an attorney gets up and says, hey, I want to talk about this. And I sit there and I would listen to the stories that they tell you, Seth. Like that you just mentioned, well, this didn't happen and that didn't happen. They didn't plan for this. And you sit there and you go, wow, this is real world stuff. Well, how could I plan? How could I take their wisdom and, and plan around it? And, and I think that is so intuitive to, you know, get the, uh, get the attorney to help you. Now, is this a document that it's not a legal document? It's just a guide, right? It's just a guide. I mean, yeah, I mean, things could probably change. It's my, it's my written wishes of what would happen along with who to contact. You got to remember, I mean, if, you know, something suddenly happened to me, right, I'm on a plane doing all the travel and the plane crashes or I hit by a bus is the normal thing, right? Anything that happens, the family is grieving. People are not making the best decisions. I mean, you see the bills people spend sometimes on funerals that may be obnoxious because grieving people don't think about what they're doing a hundred percent. And that can cause some real problems for everybody involved in this. Um, and so the, the plan is to give some clear guidelines of how this should transpire and who you need to call. And, you know, I mean, 
what consultants to call, right? I mean, we're a multi-organization shop now. So, you know, call this person, they'll help navigate the potential sale or talk to, you know, here's the, here's all our information, financials from the company, you know, and that stuff's updated. I put new company financials in, you know, every quarter, probably when I get my quarterly financials, I put them in the envelope that has, you know, some marks and stuff on them to say, Hey, this was this, this was this, make sure you're ready to, to move these things out. Should something happen? Um, just so there's updated company financials and everything, the, the LLC operating docs, you know, those types of things. Um, if you're an LLC for me, you know, every time I change that document, right, I have a company meeting and file the company minutes. Um, and I may include a copy of the company minutes that the company approved and ratified these changes to the, you know, to the, upon death agreement, if you will. Mm -hmm. And if you're an Inc, you know, board of director meetings and all that stuff and in, in, in the minutes, where do you keep the envelopes? They're in my desk. Um, the only person right now that knows where they're at um, that has a secondary key is Daniel, my COO. And then the ones at home, my wife knows where, where that one is at in my office. Is there a duplicate for the business at home? There is a copy of the duplicate for the business at home, yep. Because somehow, let's make an assumption, uh, your will says she gets all of your assets. She's got to have a big stake in what happens next under the red envelope. She's got to have a big stake. And I think that's, that's going to ultimately depend on, on many factors, depending on, you know, your family status and, and what you have and, and who your spouse is and what they're capable or not capable of doing. You know, I don't always think that's an automatic that your spouse is involved in some of that, depending on your relationship and what you what you've set up together. I understand. And so basically in that document, probably on the first page in the first paragraph, you're defining who takes the lead on uh, on the future of the business. Yep. And in that case, there's, you know, some other family members that may be involved. There's certainly my attorney. There's certainly my accountant. There's certainly a short term leadership committee that's formed as well as a defined compensation for the short-term leadership committee. And then there would be a transition to either them hiring somebody else or selling the company. You know, that's a great point. Many big corporations have these kinds of plans in the, in the C-suite, right? And if someone is appointed to be the interim CEO, they definitely look at the bonus or the compensation it takes to get the business you know, over that red envelope hurdle. And that would certainly be a shock and you may have to pay more than that person's worth, which is where some of your key man death benefits and stuff come in, where there's a policy, there's a life insurance policy that pays out to my family. And there's a life insurance policy that pays to the business to be able to probably overpay somebody to come in to do these things to get the business into the, the sellable range. So you've got a coach, uh, a consultant for the, for the business. Would you be specifically looking for a, an individual who understands uh, death and or succession? Yep. And I, I would lean on those consultants and that board to pick a successor and then start generally preparing the business for sale. But you lose the, the owner, right? There's a lot of uncertainty. And if you can't get that ship righted fast, that business could plummet in in what it's worth. So the idea behind what I'm trying to do is let them hire somebody, get the business stable, and then get it into the best sale market so that it can be passed on to, to the family and, and take care of them. Well, uh, emergency leadership, continuity, advisorships, uh, Great, great advice. I, I know we can't do justice, you know, during the podcast, but but hopefully we have, uh, you know, you never know when someone needed to hear something like this where it's going to click inside of them and says, you know what, I got to get off my butt and create the yellow and the red envelope. Why did you pick the colors or did someone say, hey, you need to have a yellow and a red? I don't know why I picked those two colors. Those are just the two that yellow is caution, like and red is <laughs> stop red flag. It's, it's not good. It's over type of deal, but that's the reason we did it. I've had some really good mentors in, you know, I'm in a Vistage group. I'm in some industry groups, but I'm in some groups that are outside. There's just some really good stories that come out of that. One of the people in my Vistage group is a wealth planner. She deals with hedge funds. She's a wealth planner. The story she tells of some of these people that suddenly pass away and what it takes for her to unravel this. And they may own businesses. They may own things. And that, you know, that kind of put a scare factor in of, oh, my gosh, just unravel all this. Like, I don't want to leave. I, I don't want to leave this mess to my heirs should something happen to me. 
they already have enough to deal with to now have to unravel all this. I, I don't want to do that. There's the soundbite, buddy, right there. I mean, you summed it up. So many of them, you know, their job's their hobby. Uh, they're not paying close attention. And then, okay, I'm gone. Let them worry about it. Nah, that shouldn't be. They're going to have enough on their plate. Like, you know, to me, I love my family. I love my, I love my people. I love the people that work for me. And I don't want to make more burdens on them when they're already burdened with, with the sudden death of somebody. Great advice. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, from now on, the yellow, the red envelopes that you own that. That's the Seth Thorson concept of what happens when. Yellow, red. I love it. Seth Thorson, Eurotech Auto Repair, New Brighton, Minnesota, Woodbury, and soon to be in Madonna. And of course, the LMV Bavarian BMW Tech Support Company. Hey, thanks, my friend. Appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.